Thanks for joining us. I'm Dusty Sonnenberg, field leader with the Ohio Soybean Council. Soybean cyst nematode is one of the leading yield robbers in the state of Ohio and across the country. You've all heard the phrase, take the test, beat the pest, or know your number, but what does that really mean when we submit those soil samples? Well, today we're going to visit with Horacio lopez Nicora. He's a soybean pathologist and nematologist, and he's going to take us through the process of analyzing those samples for soybean cyst nematode here on the campus of the Ohio State University. Come on, let's go meet Horacio. Horacio, thank you for uh, welcoming us to your lab today. We want to talk a little bit about soybean cyst nematode sampling as they get processed. And obviously, farmers are collecting samples out in their field. They're packaging them up in those kits that they receive at some of the different winter meetings. Then they come here to Cotman Hall to your laboratory. What happens next? What's sort of the basic process that you go through? Yeah, excellent. And, and welcome, Dusty. It's great to have you here today. You know, we keep sending the message that Soybeans is nematode, really, we need to actively manage it. And to actively manage soybeans is nematode, we need to know if we have the problem. We need to sample our fields. We need to submit those soil samples to the nematology lab. And we need to count those numbers. We need to know the numbers of soybeans is nematode if we have it. Hopefully, we won't have it. But in, in the case of, you know, fields that tested positive, we really want to know what level of SEN we have to then have a nice management strategy to address that, keep those levels low, or bring high levels below damage threshold. So essentially in the lab, we're receiving samples from growers. We're doing these with fundings from Ohio Soybean Council and promoting the mission of the SEN coalition. Um, we're processing up to two samples free of charge for growers. Um, most of these sampling kits we are giving away, but they can download the submission form, they can email to our lab and we'll get those to, to growers that want to send the sample. Um, the process essentially is receive the samples, we homogenize that sample, we mix it very well because we wanna capture the nematode if it's there, break those soil cores so everything is very well mixed. And then we run it through a process that we collect the cysts, the actual females that contain the eggs, crush those cysts open that will release the eggs, and then we count the eggs. We want to provide growers numbers of eggs per 100 cc of soil. And as a matter of fact, if they're gonna send this sample to another nematology lab, that is the result they should be expecting numbers of eggs. These are the initial inoculum that will hatch and penetrate the root. Um, if for some reason they're receiving numbers of cysts, I will strongly recommend that they ask for numbers of eggs per 100 cc of soil, 200 cc or 250, depending on what lab. Right. Some of these cysts can be empty. Some of these cysts can range from different numbers of eggs within those cysts. But it's actually the eggs that will hatch into the nematode that will penetrate the root. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go take a look at the process. Normally, we will receive our soil samples that growers will send to the lab. And there is a triage stage where we make sure that everything is well labeled. We have a contact information that we can report results later. That can be in an email, a phone number if we need to call. We normally recommend that everything is very well labeled. Plastic bag is what we prefer so the soil does not dry it out. The first step of processing these samples is to homogenize the sample very well. We break all those pieces of the cores that are sent with these samples and we mix it very well so we distribute equally the presence of soybean cyst nematode if it's present in this field. We want to break all those pieces so nothing retains more or less soybean cyst nematode. We then use water displacement to make sure that we can capture the, the density of the sample to process. In this case, we use 100 cc of soil. This is cubic centimeters. So we have a 100 milliliter displacement of water. That's what you're seeing there. We make sure later on to report in numbers of eggs per 100 cc of soil. Other labs may report in different units, maybe per 200 cc of soil. It doesn't matter unless 
they report something else that it's not X. We strongly recommend numbers of X per 100 cc of soil or any type of volume. We clean very well the tray so there's no cross-contamination and then we can continue doing the same work. We later take that sample and we're ready to process that. We use nested sieves. We use two sieves, one that will collect debris that we normally don't care about and we want to separate. And everything that goes through will be retained on the second sieve below and that's where the soybean cysts the soybean cyst nematode, the actual cyst, those females that will contain the eggs, will be collected. So everything that is debris, pieces of rocks or, or roots that we were not able to separate before will be captured on this first sieve. Everything that goes through that first sieve will be collected on the second one. And the size of the holes of the second sieve are small enough that can capture the female, the dead females, which are the cysts that contain the eggs within. That's what we want. And we still have a very dirty sample. So we will further clean our sample. We will take all these females or cysts containing eggs and we will start crushing them. So in that tube, we contain a lot of the soil that we will get rid of but also a lot of the cysts floating there. We normally do a previous cleaning step here. We, we normally try to use some swirling techniques. We move the water around to separate the heavy pieces of soil that we really don't care about and just keep those cysts that contain the eggs that we care about in this little tube that has, again, underneath it, a sieve. We're using a modified drill here that has a, a rubber stopper that by rubbing against the sieve, the sieve that you look there, will essentially crush the females, will essentially crush those cysts and release the eggs. The soybean cyst nematode eggs will then later be captured on this bigger sieve that is underneath that PVC tube that you saw there. We'll do further cleaning, get rid of all that debris that we really don't care about because the soybean cyst nematode female that contain the eggs have been broken apart and all the eggs have been released where we now can collect them. Remember, we want numbers of eggs per 100 cc of soil in this case, per 250 cc of soil if you're doing it in another place. It doesn't really matter. What it matter is that you get the information of how many eggs you have of soybean cyst nematode per the unit of volume that you decide to use. In this case, 100 cc of soil. So here we have all the eggs. We broke those cysts, released the egg, and we have the eggs. Now, that was done by hand. I want to show you now how we do the same process with a machine that is called an elutriator. So the advantage of using an elutriator in this case, as you can see, is that we can process four samples at the same time. We just showed previously how we could process by hand one sample at a time. Now we're showing with this machine that we have the Department of Plant Pathology at Ohio State University in the Soybean Pathology and Nematology Lab how we can process four samples at once. We put the four samples in these cones and they're separated. So each sample is independent from the other. Water will start filling up, making the cyst float or overflow and captured on the same nested sieve that we showed before. A nested sieve that will collect debris and roots that we really don't care about. And the other one underneath that will collect the cysts that we want to break and release the eggs. We're showing once again, accumulation of soil and cysts that then later we will send to the same process of crushing these cysts using that modified drill with a rubber stopper and then releasing the eggs. When we have all these eggs collected from the different samples, we will stain them. What we're doing now here is we're staining these samples. 
These eggs are very translucent if we put it under a stereoscope. It's, it's hard to count if you really don't have that expertise. So to help young scientists or, or newly trained scientists in the lab, we stain them. We make them turn into a very bright purple color that is very, very distinguishable under a stereoscope. And it makes it very easy to count and above all, to not miss any, because we want to actually capture how much of these eggs we collected per sample. So once these eggs are stained, we can take them to the microscopy room where we can count all these samples that comes from Ohio soybean growers farms. We put these on a tray where everything will be again standardized and homogenized so we can actually capture the amount of eggs that is in that sample. And then we use very specific counting dishes to help us quantify or determine the amount of soybean cis nematode eggs per that sample. These numbers are recorded first in writing and then later taken into like our digital notebooks and then reported to growers so they can get the results. Sometimes we want to use these eggs for something else. Sometimes we want to use these eggs to determine the virulence profile of a population. To do that, we can collect eggs from a farmer's field, infest these pots that we have in the greenhouse, we're essentially delivering a certain amount of eggs per each of these tubes. And in each of these tubes, we will populate with specific soybean varieties, soybean cultivars, soybean germoplasm. So here we have two options. Option number one is to determine what population type you have in the field. So we will use a set of different soybeans with specific sources of resistance to soybean cis nematode. And we will challenge this different germoplasm with soybean cis nematode from your field. We will have also susceptible control among these lines that will allow the nematode to reproduce. And then we will compare after one month that they have been in the greenhouse, how much soybean cis nematode develop in each of these resistant lines compared to the susceptible line. With this information, we can determine what population of soybean cis nematode you have in your field. Does your soybean cis nematode reproduce on a specific source of resistance or not? And that's the main thing that we want to know after we identify the presence of soybean cis nematode in our field. Well, Horacio, that was extremely interesting. Now that we've seen the process that it goes through, remind us once again, when's the best time to collect soybean cis nematode samples? How do farmers submit those so that we can get the information back? Uh, that's a great question, uh, Dusty. And again, we want to remind everyone Active management of soybeans is nematode begin with a soil sample. Know your numbers. Um, when is the best time to sample? Well, I commonly tell growers to ask themselves, do I have soybeans is nematode? If the answer is no, that's the best time to sample. Um, most, time, most of the time, the soil will be frozen in winter. Uh, we will wait until spring, take a soil sample. If we forgot by any chance because we're busy planting, we can take a sample after planting. We can take a sample anytime if we don't know if we have soybean cis nematode. Okay. Most of the time it's hard to walk a field when the, when the, when the field is already uh, uh, you know, grown to soybean. We can do it at harvest. And something that sometimes doesn't make much sense, but I strongly recommend, even if you're planting corn, mm -hmm. you can still sample those fields for soybean cis nematode. If you have it, it's gonna be there. And we wanna know what's your number. You can submit your samples to Codman Hall in Columbus, the Soybean Pathology and Nematology Lab. 
and we're going to take care of your samples, return the results to you via email or however you specify you want to receive the results. And that uh, results will come with a table with recommendations of what to do depending on your SEN levels. Very good. And again, if farmers are interested, the Soybean Council is actually helping provide funding to offset some of those, correct? That's correct. With funding from Ohio Soybean Council and promoting the mission of the SEN Coalition, we continue receiving up to two samples per growers, and we're going to process that free of charge. This is check of money. This is money that um, is yours. So let's take advantage of this. Very well said. Again, I'm Dusty Sonnenberg, Ohio Field Leader with the Ohio Soybean Council. Joining me today, Dr. Horacio lopez Nicora, showing you exactly how those soybean cyst nematode samples are processed. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.